Hello everyone, my name is Crystal Boateng and I am the author of A Pia de Ashanti Princess, A Visit to the Motherland. This is my daughter Whitney and my son Leo. They are my inspiration for the story and the main characters in the book, Efia and Kofi, are based on both of them. Today, I am going to do a book reading for you. I wrote the story for my daughter, but I also wrote it for all the little girls and boys out there, just so they can know about their heritage, be proud of their heritage, and ask questions about their family history. I hope you enjoy the book reading. Each morning when Ifya wakes up, she puts on her favorite tiara, the one with pink and green rhinestones, and looks at the rainbow colored poster on her wall that says, Dream big, little princess. The world is yours. Ifia's favorite thing to do is to read stories about princesses. She loves to learn where these princesses come from. Although Ifia enjoys dressing up like her favorite princesses and reading about where they come from, she notices that none of them look like her. Are there any princesses that look like her? Hmm. Afia has always heard stories about the motherland Ghana. Ghana is where her parents were born and raised and where her Nana still lives. According to Nana, the streets of Ghana are lined with coconut and palm trees and you can go to the beach every day because it is a tropical country. Afia loves the beach almost as much as princesses. When Nana comes to visit, she brings amazing gifts like wood carvings, handmade outfits sewn with colorful fabrics, and trinkets and beads. Nana also brings Afia special dresses made from the kinte cloth, a special Ghanaian fabric originally reserved for royals. Nana tells Efia that the kinte cloth is often worn by Ghanaians during special occasions. It comes in a variety of colors and designs, each with a unique meaning. When Efia wears one, Nana calls her a Shanti princess. One day, as Efia was trying on a kinte outfit, she turns to her mommy and asks, are there princesses in Ghana? Her mommy tells her, Ghana has a number of royal families. Your great-great-grandmother was a queen of a small town in the Ashanti region. The phone starts ringing as if you ask, am I a princess? Nana calls on the weekends, so Efia answers the phone. Hello, Nana. Are you coming to visit soon? Am I a princess? Please tell me about my great-great-grandmother. <laughs> Nana cannot get a word in until Efia finally has to take a breath. Well, come visit me in Ghana and we can talk about your great-great-grandmother, said Nana. Efia was so excited she had always wanted to visit Ghana. Efia ran downstairs and found her little brother Kofi, who was doing a puzzle. Guess what? We have a queen in the family. <laughs> and we're going to visit Nana in Ghana, she exclaimed. Twirling and jumping around the room, Kofi looked up from his puzzle and said, Cool, when do we leave? Efia knew she had to prepare for this trip, but she did not know where to begin. She waited until her daddy got home from work and told him she was starting a journal of things she needed to know for her trip to Ghana. Efia knew Ghana is in Africa, but she needed to learn more. Her daddy was excited to give her a lesson in geography. Efia and her daddy went into the study 
and he grabbed a book from the shelf and opened it up to the map of Africa. He pointed out to the map and pointed out some specific facts. Ghana is located on the west coast of Africa, in between Cote d'Ivoire and Togo. There are two seasons in Ghana, the dry season and the rainy season. A fierce trip is during the dry season. Ghana is divided into 16 regions. Afia and her family are from the Ashanti region, and the capital is Kumase. English is the official language of Ghana, but there are over 20 national languages. The Chi dialect of Akan is the most widely used language in the country. The next day, Afia called her cousin who visited Ghana last summer. When Afia told her about her trip, she said, if you're going to visit Ghana, you will need to learn a few useful phrases in Chi. Akwaba means welcome. to say means how are you. Mehuye means I am fine. Mepawucho means please. Medase means thank you. The day finally arrived for the big trip. Although Efia was excited, she was also nervous, since this was her first time flying on an airplane. It's going to be okay, Mommy reassured her. You will be able to sleep throughout the entire flight. Once they boarded the plane, Efia settled into her seat between Mommy and Kofi. Before she knew it, she had fallen asleep on Mommy's shoulders. <laughs> The plane touched down at the Kotoka International Airport in Ghana's capital of Accra, just as the sun was rising. They boarded another short flight to take them to their final destination, Kumase, the capital city of the Ashanti region. Efia pulled out her journal to practice chi phrases one more time. After they had collected their bags, Mommy, Efia, and Kofi found Nana right away. The colorful banner that read, Aquaba, helped. Efia ran straight to Nana and gave her a big hug and said, Nana, what to say? Nana smiled and replied, Mehoye. On the drive to Nana's house, Efia thought the statues at every intersection were amazing. She asked, why are there so many statues in this city? Nana explained, each one represents a momentous period in the city's history. Nana's house was like a mansion. The driveway was so long and there were colorful flowers everywhere. The inside of the house was fancy. There were huge windows and with gold around them, giant mirrors, carved symbols on the walls, and a huge chandelier in the living room. Afia was amazed, but really, she was hungry. <laughs> The smells coming from the kitchen made Afia's mouth water. Nana had prepared all their favorite food and invited a few relatives for a dinner party. Afia ate omutu, rice balls with chicken soup. Kofi gobbled up jollof rice with grilled chicken. And mommy enjoyed her all-time favorite dish, fried yellow plantains with bean stew. Efia could not keep her eyes open after dinner. She wanted to stay up to get to know her cousins, but the jet lag got the best of her. Go ahead and get some rest, my Ashanti princess. We have a big day ahead of us tomorrow, whispered Nana. 
The next morning, they visited the Menshia Palace Museum in downtown Kumasi. They were greeted at the entrance by their tour guide, Ochiame Kwame. The museum was filled with artifacts and many statues of former kings and queens of the Ashanti Kingdom. They stopped in front of a statue of a woman dressed as a warrior and read her story of the young Ashanti queen known as the warrior queen. It goes like this. Many years ago, the Ashanti kingdom was very powerful. Many tried to conquer the kingdom but failed. An important artifact was stolen and the warrior queen fought a battle for it. The warrior queen, along with members of the royal family, were captured during the battle. In order to protect the rest of warrior queen's family, her young daughter was raised as a local in a remote village. The warrior queen never returned home, but her descendants still live today. Ochiame Kwame turned to Efia and Kofi and said, We have been awaiting your arrival. Your grandmother mentioned that she was going to bring you here. He then bowed to Nana and said, Nana Memawu Akwaba, which translates to, Your Highness, you are welcomed. It turns out Nana was a descendant of the warrior queen, and passing down this family history had been done for generations. Also, interesting, Nana means grandmother or grandfather in Chi, but it, it's also a title used to address royals. Efia needed to add all of these new facts to her journal list so she would not forget one single detail. Ochiame Kwame led them through a secret passage to the current palace. The king met with them and presented them with intricately hand-woven kente cloths and said, you're always welcome at the palace. That night, Efia could not sleep. She had always dreamed of seeing a princess that looked like her, and now she was that princess. Efia realized she wanted to be more than a princess who wore fancy dresses and glittery tiaras. She wanted to be courageous, selfless, and honor her family history. Like the ancestors who came before her, she wanted to be a warrior princess.